Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Raymond and today we're going to go over how to file the GET return for the state of Hawaii both for one island and for multiple islands. And the reason I've decided to redo this video is because they have just recently this month decided to change their format on their online submission process. So it's actually much easier and the calculations work out a lot better than they used to. So let's go ahead and get signed in and get started. Okay, for this video I'm going to use a real company that I work with with real numbers. Um, you can see here you got the, the general excise and withholding. Withholding is more of a payroll feature that we're not going to go over today. Uh, the general excise G49 here is the annual return. It's kind of a true up return to make sure that you've captured everything you were supposed to capture and uh, provide any, any financial discrepancies. But what we're going to focus on here is the G45. Uh, the G45 in this case is monthly because it's it earns a lot of revenue, this company does, and yours might might be quarterly or semi-annually depending on your revenue, but anything over $4,000 a year in revenue uh, is supposed to file monthly. Here are the numbers we're going to be working with, um, but before we get into that I wanted to show you how GET is calculated um, both for you know the vendor and for the state. So let's say you sell something for five hundred dollars now on most of the islands most of the counties except for Maui uh, you can charge four point seven one two percent on this five hundred dollar subtotal and that's gonna be twenty three dollars and fifty six cents and of course you can see the total here and then what the state will do is we'll turn around and treat this twenty three fifty six as revenue and they're gonna tax you based on this total. So the full 523.56 is going to be taxed 4.5%, which just happens to be the same amount as 23.56. So if you see that they're charging you tax on the tax, don't freak out, it's okay. They've managed to calculate what you're allowed to charge the customer, so that way they get their 4.5%. So over here you're going to see the revenues that we're going to be working with, the actual numbers we're going to be using, uh, and here's the deduction for Oahu and then we've got the totals. Um, for the sake of this example I'm just going to use my company and my GET number. Uh, it's, it's public information so I'm not showing anything classified. But let's go ahead and get started here. So I'm going to go back to the website and click on the G45. Alright and we're going to go ahead and file for June 30th just for the example. And then on the screen you just hit next, pretty simple. Um, here you're going to have your selection of islands that you get to choose from, and really they're counties and districts. Um, but for the sake of this example, we're going to pick Oahu first because that's the one that had the deduction. And then if you have any exemptions or deductions, then you're going to have to click yes here first. Alrighty, after you select your district, uh, it's going to bring you to this page, which is the wholesale page. Uh, don't let this confuse you. This is actually not the area some of you are going to be filling out if, you're, if you sell directly to customers. If you are a business to business, you will fill this out. Um, if you're an Uber or Lyft driver, then you're going to fill out the wholesale services here. Uh, and that's just going to be for your actual driving fees, not for your tips. Your tips will actually go on the next screen. So let's go ahead and go to the next screen because we don't actually have any wholesaling activity for this example. Now this company that I'm filing for is in the business of commercial real estate, so let's go ahead and go back and grab the numbers here. Uh, so we got the revenue, I'm just going to copy, and then we're going to take it back to the website, and other rentals, and paste. And then you got the exemptions here, and since they fixed it, you can now just Put in the numbers directly so here's the total revenue total exemptions and then it will calculate correctly now as i will show you and when i click out of this box it'll calculate there you go 295 542 which is what i have here too now this screen is just for insurance producers or insurance salesmen uh, they get the lowest GET rate because of all the regulations and certain fees that the state charges. So they had to give them a, a good tax break. Uh, it's 0.15%, I believe. So it's super low. Yep, right here, 0.15%. 
but it doesn't apply to us, so we're going to next. It would appear this has already been taken out, so let's go ahead and go to next. And here is where the exemption is. So um, when you have the exemption, you're going to have to fill out some information, let them know who's responsible for this exemption. Uh, in this case, it's going to be other rentals because that's the activity we use. Um, here I know to type in 16.5 because that's the sublease deduction. And then the amount has to match what the deduction was, which was 73601. And then when you click out, it will grab the total here. You click next, and then it's going to ask for a little bit more information. So you're going to need the Hawaii tax ID number, which is the GE number, and then you're going to need the name and DBA name of the business. So in this case, um, Tinkerton is a DBA, so technically I should put my name and Tinkerton LLC, uh, but let's pretend it's just a full-on C corporation. And next, all right, and now you're going to see the amount due and payable. Uh, that's going to be right here, the thirteen thousand two ninety nine in this case, and this is the full deduction, the seventy three thousand six hundred one. Then we're going to click next, and then what you're going to see is the amount due here in red, and you're going to see include ACH enabled bank account payment. Uh, you can hit yes if you want to, and you can fill out your bank information for an ACH payment. Um, you can also submit without a payment, which will just file a paper return, um, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because it's too easy to forget, unless it's a zero return, of course. Um, save draft is what I'll usually do. Uh, this company requires that I print out a copy before I actually submit it. That way they can approve the, approve the payment. And what it will say is in a giant watermark diagonal across the page, it'll say stored instead of filed. Um, after you file it, it'll say filed, so the watermark changes based on if you filed or not. Alright, and since we went over the single island return, let's go back and go over the multiple island return. Yes. Alright, G45. File return. Next. And we're going to just pick all of them because why not? And the part that they've changed for this month and hopefully going forward is that they've separated each individual district into its own G45. So let's go to the next screen and let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here at the top you can see it says Oahu District. So this whole page is just going to be for Oahu. So let's go ahead and fill in the information. I'm going to speed it up here so you don't have to wait. So as you can see here, nothing has really changed from the last return we did, the single return. It's the same same amount, same calculations, and none of this other stuff needs to be filled out. So we're going to go ahead and go to next, and then you're going to get your Maui district. So let's go ahead and fill in all that information. Okay, and then we'll go to the next one, which I believe is yep, Hawaii. So that's also the same as Big Island. And then I'm going to get that filled out for you. And then next and last is Kauai District. And that one was just $1, so it's an easy one to type in. And we'll go to next. And then it's going to ask you the same questions it asked you a minute ago for the exemptions. So, and we've got that filled in. So next. And then you will see the full return, uh, $32,970.98 is what we're going to have to pay this month. Um, again, you're going to go in here and click next and scroll to the bottom and then next. And we'll go ahead and click next. And normally we'll, we would save as a draft just as I mentioned before. Um, but since this is a test, I'm not going to use, you know, Tinker 10 and all that stuff. So I'm not going to file this. I'm going to go back, cancel out because there's one more thing I want to show you. After you submit your payment, you submit for payment, all that good stuff, is you're going to want to verify that the payment was actually submitted with your return. Now when you submit payment, there is a feature where you can age it out and you can actually pay for a future date, set the date that you want it to pay for. 
Uh, definitely don't want to set that past the 20th or the first business day after the 20th if the 20th falls on a holiday or you know a weekend but you basically just want to go back to the home page here go to submissions and then look right over here make sure that it says g45 returned for whatever amount and payment of because if it's missing the payment of that means you've just submitted a paper return or an information return and the payment wasn't wasn't sent and you will be penalized if you don't send the payment on time and that concludes this video if you guys have any questions feel free to ask me in the comments below I'll be happy to answer I'm usually pretty quick as long as I get my email alert I'll usually respond within an hour thank you so much for watching Aloha